How to save 8,000 miles in 44 days while traveling from the Pacific to Atlantic Oceans? Hello, my name is Kirill Prima and today we'll talk about the famous Panama Canal. Let's begin! Throughout the 19th century, American and British leaders and businessmen wanted to ship goods quickly and cheaply between the Atlantic and Pacific coasts. It was also important for military purposes. The United States needed a canal in order to help, help for economic reasons and military reasons. Before the Panama Canal was built in the 20th century, in order to get from the East Coast to the West Coast or the Pacific Ocean, you either had to go through a difficult route through the jungles of what is Nicaragua, or you had to go around all the way around South America, Cape Horn and South America. It took an awful long time and both trips were very dangerous. The first attempt to build a canal through Panama was made by French. They began excavating in 1880. Their campaign was led by Ferdinand de Lesseps. He was a builder of the famous Suez Canal in Egypt. But malaria, yellow fever and other tropical diseases in Panama conspired against the French campaign. After nine years and the loss of approximately 20,000 lives and $300 million, the French attempt went bankrupt. In 1903, U.S. and the President Theodore Roosevelt took advantage of the revolution in Panama to launch the building of an American canal there. He sent U.S. warships to Panama City from the Pacific Ocean side and other warships to Colin City from the Atlantic Ocean side in support of the Panamian independence. The Panama Canal has been completed in 1914. One historical fact. The U.S. warship Oregon took 67 days to sail 12,000 miles from San Francisco to Florida. The ship sailed extra 8,000 miles and wasted 44 more days to go around South America. It was unacceptable during the Spanish-American War in 1898. The first attempt to have fast way between oceans was made in 1850. The U.S. and Great Britain negotiated the Clayton Boulevard Treaty over a purposed canal through the Central American Republic of Nicaragua. But the biggest problem was the volcanoes in the area. In 1901, Vice President Theodore Roosevelt entered the White House after the assassination of President William McKinley. Roosevelt quickly declared his support for a canal. The U.S. Senate voted in favor of building the canal through Panama in 1902, but the financial terms were unacceptable to Colombia's Congress, and it rejected the offer. Roosevelt exploded. Those contemptible little creatures in Bogota ought to understand how much they are jeopardizing things and imperiling their own future. Well, America, the United States, wanted a canal for a long time. They offered Colombia what the United States thought was a fair price, but Colombia didn't think it was enough and they were also very nationalistic and they felt it would, Colombia, the United States would be dominating Colombia. They felt the United States was being too imperialistic about it. So Colombia turned down the American offer. President Roosevelt used the big stick diplomacy to build a canal across Panama. He decided to protect the revolutionaries of Panama. First is Roosevelt encouraged the Panamanians to revolt against Colombia. The Panama was a province then of Colombia and the United States and Roosevelt used their military might to to threaten Colombia. The Panamanians did a bloodless revolt and became an independent country. The United States recognized Panama immediately in order to find a friendly government that would agree to its terms to build a canal. 
In November 1903, U.S. Army docked in Panama. The appearance of the warship Nashville was all the revolutionaries needed to launch a bloodless takeover of Panama. U.S. gunboats and marines arrived to Panama also. Colombian troops left Panama after their officer in charge received a bribe. Three days after the revolt began, the U.S. recognized the Republic of Panama. The U.S. gave a guarantee of Panama's independence and paid Panama $10 million and an annual payment of $250,000 for a 10-mile wide canal zone across Panama forever. Roosevelt decided to use France's experience. U.S. paid $40 million for its rights and assets in Panama. Building the Panama Canal was an incredibly difficult challenge. It was 300 feet above sea level, big dangers of malaria and yellow fever, flus and landslides erased weeks of work during the long rainy seasons. There were a couple of reasons why the French attempts did not work. One was corruption in the French, the French businessmen. There was a lot of corruption and the, company, the companies, they had a lot of financial difficulties. Also, there were a lot of technical reasons. It was a very difficult project to build the canal, and the French really weren't technically engineering up to it. And also, if you're gonna build through the jungle, you need to be able to deal with the tropical diseases. The United States was able to deal with the engineering and the health problems much better, and the financial problems much better than the French were. U.S. Army Colonel William C. Corgas, an expert in tropical diseases, began to work in Panama. He had helped illuminate yellow fever and malaria. John Stevens concluded that digging a sea level canal was impossible and recommended a log canal instead. Sea level canal has been changed by log controlled canal. Theodore Roosevelt's great enterprise completed six months ahead of schedule with cost $352 million. Shortly before the Panama Canal opened for traffic, U.S. paid $25 million to Colombia to remove all misunderstandings. Panama got independence. The U.S. built the canal. During World War II, the Panama Canal proved to be a vital part of the U.S. military strategy, allowing ships to transfer easily between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Panama gained independence at a price. The American president, Theodore Roosevelt, liked to boast, I took Panama. He was referring to as part of the international negotiations and double dealing that bought about the construction of the now famous canal of the 20th century. Every day, about 14,000 ships pass between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans through the Panama Canal. They save a lot of money and time. Thank you.